Hi, I'm Kristen Garlitz with APS EdTech, and this is how to use Google Classroom as a staff hub for resources. Google Classroom is great for using with staff and um, giving staff resources instead of just for using it with students. First, I'm going to give you nine reasons why it's good to use Google Classroom for staff resources. Google Classroom has become an essential classroom tool for millions of teachers and students, so why not use it to communicate with staff and to organize and share resources? Reason number one, a lot of people are sick of email. Um, while we can send emails, sometimes people's inboxes are super full, and so getting a reminder via email um, can sometimes get lost. Google Classroom allows you to save everything there. Um, instead of having to have people organize their email inboxes or create folders, uh, we don't have to worry about lost, deleted emails. Everything would live in the Google Classroom. So people know where to check instead of trying to find it in their inboxes. Number two, shared Google Drives can be a mess. Um, if you have your staff in a shared Google Drive at school, sometimes people sh uh, delete things. They, um, they don't know where to find stuff. Folders are not... Uh, organized correctly, maybe things aren't named properly, so they're hard to search for. Uh, with Google Classroom, you can set it up and have control over it for your staff and provide them just the resources that they need uh, instead of everybody putting all of their things in a Google Drive. Number three, it does all of the things. Uh, Classroom combines the capabilities of Gmail, Drive, Calendar, and more, which makes it a great place to make a hub for everything. Number four, it offers a mobile app. If you haven't gotten the app from the Play Store, uh, do so. The Classroom app is awesome, and it's a great way to um, push notifications to your teachers and students anytime, anywhere. Um, it's a great place to get resources on the fly, too. Number five, it sets an example. If you want your teachers to use Google Classroom with their students, uh, using it for your staff communication sends a strong message about the importance of organization and um, best practices so that they can learn how to also set up their Google Classrooms for their students. Number six, use it to celebrate accomplishments. Um, when you use the announcement feature on the Google Classroom stream, you can build community by celebrating accomplishments and milestones. You can have uh, teachers attach their own images, files, and links. You can enable comments, have teachers post uh, student work and comment on each other's work so that they can see what great things are happening across their school site. You can also shout out for the teachers if you as the TLF or the administrator walk around and take pictures of great artwork hanging in the hall, teachers in action. It's a great place to celebrate all of the good teaching and good learning that is happening on our school sites. Number seven, you can use Google Classroom to gather feedback. When you use the question feature, which is uh, under the create button on classroom assignments, you can ask a single question that can either be multiple choice or short response. This is a great way to gather quick feedback so that you can um, add items to the agenda of your next staff meeting, find the best time to schedule classroom observations. You can make the responses private so that they can't see each other's answers, but only you and anybody else that's a teacher in the classroom can, or you can allow everyone to see and comment. This is great for asking open-ended or multiple choice questions. If you are gonna ask more than one question, it is a good idea to use a Google form instead, but it's great for gathering that quick feedback, um, quick opinions from your staff. Number eight, you can organize resources for easy access. Classroom is a feature called materials, again, under that create button. Instead of creating an assignment, you can create a material. When you do that, it creates a post that can be organized uh, of things that teachers need access to, things like schedules, rosters, department documents, policies, Anything that you want teachers to have access to in a nice organized place, um, using materials as a post can be really helpful. Another nice part about that is that if those materials live in an administrator's or TLF drive and they get updated, those posts will automatically update in Google Classroom. So we don't have to worry about printed things or um, downloaded PDFs becoming out of date. And number nine, it's great to help you manage deadlines for requirements. Um, there are lots of important tasks that teachers must do throughout the school year. Things like pre and post observation paperwork or contributing to the reaccreditation process for your school. 
Um, there's a lot of deadlines that are very important, but they can be easy to forget or get overlooked. When you create an assignment in Google Classroom, it will allow you to communicate your expectations and allow administrators to verify who has completed the tasks. And it will ask staff to click mark is done. So just like students, if there's anything important paperwork wise that you need um, staff to turn in, setting it as an assignment and adding a deadline so it shows up on their calendar and to-do list is a great way to help staff keep track of um, those important requirements. Next, we'll talk about making classroom work for staff resources. So unlike a Google Classroom for students, we are working with professionals here. So we're gonna do things a little bit different than we would with our students. The first thing is you're gonna add your staff as students. Either you're going to get that join code from Google Classroom um, and send that out to your staff and then have them go to classroom.google.com and then click join class and then type in the code. Or if you have access to a list of all of your staff email addresses, you can use the plus people button and add all of them with their email addresses. Then they will receive an email with an invite notification, which makes it even easier instead of um, using the class join code. You can have up to 2000 students per classroom. So even the largest schools don't need to worry about running out of room in a single Google Classroom. Next, you can add other TLFs at your school and administrators as co-teachers. Um, you can have up to 20 co-teachers in a Google Classroom. It's a good idea to include any administrators, deans, or TLFs that would like to uh, provide resources for staff and have eyes on that. As a note, Google Classrooms with staff in them should never be synced with GoGuardian. Um, and that's not how GoGuardian is supposed to be used. Um, some overall classroom organization tips. Uh, first and foremost, you may want to turn on or off notifications. If your inbox is flooded with notifications from your Google Classroom, it's very easy to fix that. You're going to scroll to the three lines menu at the top of Google Classroom on the top left corner. Click on that and then scroll down to settings. Once you're in the settings menu, you can turn on or off um, email notifications for classes that you teach and classes that you are enrolled in um, to control how many emails you're getting. Each staff and student needs to set their own notifications. That is not something you can control as the teacher for the class. Everybody has to do it themselves. Next, you can actually organize the classroom tiles on your home page. Um, if you are enrolled in classes and teaching classes, it's sometimes helpful to click and drag and organize those into groups that make more sense for you. You just literally click and drag on any of the tiles when you're on your um, classroom homepage here. Next, it's a good idea to turn off posting to the stream. Um, what this means is that when you post assignments and materials in the classwork tab, you don't want them also showing up in the stream so that you can save that stream, that homepage, for um, important announcements and celebrations of teachers and student work. So what you do is you go to inside the Google Classroom, you're going to click on the settings wheel in the top right corner, then scroll down to classwork on the stream and change it here to hide notifications. Once you click save, that means that all of the classwork will now live in the classwork tab and will no longer be posted to the stream. This is a good idea to do for your own classrooms with your students also. Um, as a note for students, you can also turn off the ability for students to post comments in the stream. This is a good idea if you've had kiddos making some bad choices with um, commenting and getting out of control in the classroom stream. So again, use that stream for important announcements such as celebrations, reminders. Um, teachers should go to the classwork tab for all their important links and resources. This is a best practice for all classrooms. Next, it's helpful if you can organize the classwork tab also. Um, consider using some topic organization. First and foremost, make sure that all assignments and materials go underneath corresponding topics and make sure that the topic names are easy to understand. This is an example here where it's technology support at Sandia High School. And then the next topic down below is Canvas teacher evaluation so that teachers know where to go for the help that they need with the teacher evaluations. You can click and drag topics into an order that makes sense. I wouldn't switch it all the time, but pick an order that works, either from alphabetical, so they can always scroll through the alphabet, or of importance, put the most important topics at the top. 
You can use emojis with topic names and associated resources for quick recognition. When you're creating a topic or you're creating an assignment, right click or two finger tap in the name of the assignment or the name of the topic, and then you'll choose emoji from the menu that pops up. Um, pick emojis that are going to make sense for the topics. And then a lot of teachers don't know this, but this topic bar that shows up on the left hand side of the screen, you can scroll down to the topic that you're needing. When you click on a topic, it will automatically open all of the assignments or materials that are um, associated with them. So it makes it quick and easy to navigate to the resources you need. So there are different types of posts and you're going to use them for different purposes. When you're in the classwork tab and you click that create button, um, the first type of uh, post is an assignment. You will use that for things that staff need to complete, such as pre or post observations, uploading lesson plans, um, surveys, anything that you are requiring of staff. Staff can turn click in so that you, the TLFs or the administrators can keep track of who has completed. Um, it's a good idea to use due dates so that they show up in the to-do list and the calendar. And you can create a copy for each teacher or give everyone editing access depending on what you're um, doing. So just like for students, uh, you will choose when you attach something to an assignment that students or teachers can view the file, edit the file, or make a copy for each student. Down here is that question type. You can ask a question for a quick survey. Again, you can do multiple choice or short response answers, and you can set it to public or private. Uh, depending on the needs of the survey question that you're asking your staff. And then the last type that you're going to use in a staff hub is materials. This is a great way to post resources that teachers need to have access to. Materials cannot be turned in and have no due date, so they will not show up on the calendar, but they will live in the Google Classroom however you organize them. Make sure you set share permissions correctly. This is the biggest issue when sharing work with teachers. Um, generally, when we are teachers and we have students in a Google Classroom and you create worksheets for them or share um, templates, uh, we're making a copy for each student, so we don't need to worry about share permissions. When you're setting a post with a material and it's something that you want teachers to have access to to read, you need to make sure that the share permission is set correctly in your drive. So you're going to navigate to your Google Drive, then wherever your um, resources, the doc, the slide, whatever, you're going to make sure that you set the share permissions so that it's not restricted, which is the, um, the default. You're going to make sure that it's either set to Albuquerque Public Schools or anyone with this link. You will need to do that for every single uh, material that you share through Google Classroom so that your teachers can have access to it. If you don't do it, you will get all those emails requesting access and teachers who won't be able to open the, the documents or slides or whatever that you share with them. It is possible to post things for only certain staff or groups only. Um, this is a great way to keep it organized for your staff so that they're not seeing everything. For example, if your school uses a set, set of lesson plans for math teachers versus social studies versus English, you could post those um, lesson plan templates. When you create the post, um, underneath where it says post, there is a button there actually where it says all students. If you click on that, it gives you a drop down menu of all of the staff that are included, and then you can click on or off names. So this would help keep classroom organized for everyone. A Google Classroom is a great way to keep an email list for your entire staff and send really quick emails. So if you've struggled with how do I email all of my staff at once for things like um, an upcoming snow day or important announcement. If all of your staff are in the Google Classroom, when you go to the People tab, you can click on Actions and then click Email and email everybody all at once. Those emails do come from Classroom, but they come from your email account, so they won't get sent to a spam folder. You could also use that to email individuals or small groups, and teachers can look each other up too. So it's a really great way to have that running list of all the staff at your school and everybody can have eyes on everybody else's names in one quick place. EdTech has a ton of resources for you. Um, we do have a full self-paced Google Classroom uh, course through PowerSchool, so if you would like to learn more about Google Classroom, you can go to that. We've also created a self-paced course in PowerSchool about the new Google Classroom practice sets. 
which is a great way to have students practice with feedback during class. You can also request a training from EdTech and we can come out and train your school on Google Classroom and anything else tech related, either you, your staff, or small groups. And then we have some lovely principles if you are interested. Um, get a copy of this presentation and then we've got these on the goes which are great flyers of quick information to hang up in your staff lounge or um, other public spaces. Thanks for watching. We hope that you learned how to use Google Classroom in more ways than you can with just students.